Welcome everyone. Good afternoon. Today is June 18th. Actually one day before Juneteenth and three days after Bostock versus Clayton County, Georgia. We're very honored to be here in connection with the launch of our diversity committee. Together we advance. Let me start off by saying because we're one day prior to Juneteenth. Juneteenth was meant to, to celebrate and commemorate the end of slavery. Now, end of slavery really was two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation of, of Abraham Lincoln. So it took a while. The law was slower in, the, in this sense to, to, to get to reality. The law came out, but things didn't happen immediately. Yet we've, we're paying more attention to it now than we have for many, many years, notwithstanding the fact that you know, this happened uh, centuries ago. And why is that? Because we're seeing a lot of change. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing it out in the streets. We're seeing it on our day to day, in the companies and businesses, and a lot of people would say, well, a lot of these are social events. And you're a, a, a US-Mexico Chamber of Commerce. So why are we discussing diversity? Why are we discussing inclusion, equality, and things that we believe in? And, and we're, we're going to get a, a, a very full explanation of that. We have a very talented group of people here today with us. But it would be reminiscent of me to remember everyone that at times, we need to see what's happening in the real world and adapt to it. And companies have done that. They've done that much quicker than our government. To the point that there was a Wall Street Journal article today that said that a lot of companies were gonna make Juneteenth, which is tomorrow, a holiday. And you know, I can mention a few of these companies, but I'm proud to say that my law firm, Greenberg Torek, the biggest law firm in the United States, has officially declared Juneteenth as a national U.S. holiday. A lot of other companies, not taking it to that extent, are still celebrating it. And why? Because we're hurting. We're hurting as a society. We all saw what happened to George Floyd. And we're seeing people of all colors, all races, all religions, all uh, national origins complaining and protesting for a more fair world, for a, a, a world that's more inclusive. And companies have taken the lead on that. And we think that as a chamber, our, our members are companies. So we need to follow very closely and we need to keep up with them. We cannot fall behind. We cannot even fall behind with our government or at times with law, even though we've had significant achievements. As I said, it's three days later, after a Supreme Court decision that stated Title VII of the Civils Act of 1964, and we have an expert, Elizabeth Schwartz, who will talk about that in much more detail than I will, but that said that an employer cannot discriminate uh, towards an individual by either not hiring them, firing them, or just otherwise discriminating in the basis of their sexual identity or their sexual orientation. And, and, and there'll be, again, a deeper explanation on this. But it's shocking because we're talking of a Civil Rights Act of 1964. So over 50 years have gone by. And only now are we, are, 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 is this clear? Is this the law of the land? But before this, companies were already working on inclusion efforts. And why? Why is that? Well, one, clearly, it's what's right. And I'm a strong believer that in business, on a personal level, you, you need to do what's right. But it also makes sense. It makes business sense. And why is that? Well, we're a very large country. We're a very diverse country. Some people could say that we're 50 countries just because of the way our, our, our federalism works. Uh, we're a country of immigrants, the famous melting pot, where everyone said it does not matter where you come from, as long as you work hard, it's the American dream that you can be whoever you want. There's no limits. 
that hasn't necessarily been the case. So that was, that has, sorry, I was hearing some noise. I thought someone was talking. So again, going back to how diverse we are, we have many religions, many races, many national origins. Uh, obviously, we have gender uh, distinctions, and we have sexual orientation and identity distinctions. Companies want to connect with every single one of us. Why? Because it makes business sense. You want more clients. You want more consumers. We're in the era of the internet, where news spread very quickly. Consumers quickly react to what companies are doing. What about employment? And we were talking before about this new Supreme Court decision that uh, deals in the context of employment with things that employers need to do. But what about employees not wanting to work? How do you attract top talent? Top talent will try to understand what's the soul of the company. What is the company doing? How do they work on diversity? How, how am I going to feel that? Am I going to feel part of a team or am I going to feel different? Am I going to simply be based on my talent and my effort? And if not, I will not go there. What about investors or shareholders? Where is the money that is necessary to grow and to provide liquidity to, to their shareholders and to their stakeholders? Where will that come from? We Not too long ago at the US-Mexico Chamber of Commerce Inter-American Chapter, we had a seminar just on social responsibility funds. There's a lot more access to capital now than probably the, uh, you know, when, than there's ever been. And these funds, these people want their money to be used in companies or in projects that they think are socially responsible, are fair, and in this case, inclusive. So that's another factor. It is quite common, and I think I always say this, as a shareholder of the largest law firm in the United States, I consistently stand in front of my clients and have to explain how diverse our team is, how diverse our efforts are, what are our diversity policies and procedures, because clients want that. And they will only hire firms that actually adapt. And that applies to many suppliers. At times, these companies drive the rules of many other companies because companies that want, their, that want the business are willing to change to adapt to these requirements. So all of these are business requirements. Again, we've talked clients, we've talked employees, we've talked funding, we've talked suppliers, we've talked that this is a very broad market. And this is why we think it's extremely important and the Inter-American chapter believes that we need to strengthen our efforts to assist companies in achieving a real diverse environment real inclusion, a fair one, but a beneficial one as well. And we're here to provide that, we're here to assist. Today, our theme is gonna be LGBT+, of course, uh, with Elizabeth Schwartz, who's a, an icon and, 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 and a, a very strong advocate and very recognized leader uh, in these efforts, and we're honored to have her. Uh, just very quickly, before, before I introduce our, uh, our, our consul, the consul general of Mexico in Miami, Mr. Jonathan Chait, who has also helped us ensure that these efforts strike the right amount of, um, pro of proper effect, the, the right result. He's been working with us and we appreciate that. We appreciate his guidance. Before I do that, let me just explain the committee very quickly. The committee, as most big companies do, when you have a board, the board cannot cover every single aspect or every single thing that's important for an institution. So we thought it made sense to create a committee, a more specialized committee, a committee with people that actually understood and knew the goals, the objectives, and some of the struggles as well, and to be able to help us achieve our goals. And we found in Kristen Turner and Kevin Hunting, who will both speak today, real strong leaders, really good people, very successful business people. But that's not necessarily enough. They're, they're very complete people, both professionally and personally. And we think they're right, the right people to help us with these efforts. 
So I want to thank them for being here. I want to thank them for all the effort and work they put into this. I want to thank Elizabeth Schwartz for being here and speaking with us. I obviously want to thank Clementina Gay for, for always working on every single one of our initiatives. And I want to thank you for being here and for helping us doing what's right and doing what makes business sense. And with that, let me introduce Mr. Jonathan Chaid, Consul General of Mexico in Miami. Muchas gracias, Antonio. It's really a pleasure to be here. And uh, it's an honor to be present at the inauguration of the Together We Advance Committee of the U.S.-Mexico Chamber of Commerce Inter-American Chapter. Implementing this group is not only historical, but it's also consistent with history. A time when inclusion in this case, that of the LGBTQ community, is no longer a privilege, but a right, as demonstrated by the Supreme Court just this week. Inclusion and protection policies of the LGBTQ community are also parts of Mexico's foreign policy guidelines. Therefore, any representation of Mexico in the world is a safe zone. Discrimination of any kind, including that of sexual preference and orientation, is not tolerated. Where marriage equality and the registration of children on their same-sex marriages can be carried out according to the laws that uphold them. Once again, the U.S.-Mexico Chamber of Commerce, through its president, Antonio Peña, and its executive director, Clementina Gay, demonstrates its enormous visionary ability, its political sensitivity, and its determination to do the right thing. Congratulations. In the, it is for these reasons that the Miami chapter stands above the rest. It works set precedence as an example for any day institution to abide by any order to remain relevant. A committee is effective through its members. And in this case, I congratulate the chambers of, on its excellent work in selecting individuals like Chris Turner and Kevin Hunting. Their extensive experience in the corporate world will successfully lead this group. Understanding the importance of the LGBTQ community in the commercial field is vital. It is equally important to guide, especially future generations, against possible obstacles, new opportunities, and the creation of awareness of having workspaces where everyone is included, like Elizabeth Schwartz will talk about it. This network will serve as an integral force in securing the future. We must be mindful of where we are going and what are the actions we're taking in upholding these identities. At the end of it, identity is where we make an impact as a bilateral chamber. Celebrating and cementing diversity, equality, empowerment of freedom remain, remind us of, of, the, of our achievements and efforts to build a business culture of inclusion. Those who subscribe to affirm the commitment of our representations to the promotion and protection of the rights of LGBTQ people, both in Mexico, in the US, and the rest of the world. Thank you for having me here. Uh, uh, looking forward uh, to continue working with uh, the chamber, with this chapter in particular, you are doing an excellent work and I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to do more things with you. Thanks, Jonathan. And thanks, Antonio, for the great introduction. Um, hey, everybody, my name is Kevin Hunting and I am the VP of Strategy for Together We Advance. Um, and as Antonio mentioned, um, having spent almost 17 years with large Fortune 500 companies, um, and one that stands out is Gap Inc. and the, the Fisher family, they were a family that um, really got behind inclusion, diversity and inclusion, when it really wasn't the, the, the thing to do, to be perfectly honest. Um, it was during a time when um, the environment that they've created around diversity and inclusion is, is fundamental because all of their consumers that they're trying to reach are represented by those individuals who make up the company, which is so critical in coming up with, you know, amazing marketing campaigns and different ways to reach and speak to those audience so that you're actually speaking to them, um, not at them. So they represent, they understood very early on how important it is to create an environment that was representative of the people who they're actually, they're speaking to and they're building relationships with. And so, um, I think that piece is just so critical. Um, also, 
I am the founder of Two Steps Forward Coaching, where I actually help LGBTQ plus professionals gain the clarity and the courage to make the next big move in their career. And one of the pieces that I think is, is deeply personal to me is also, we talk about this on kind of a grand scale at a, at a very large corporate level, but a lot of it actually starts with each one of us. Um, a lot of having an understanding of what it means to be inclusive really is going inward and understanding how your own belief systems may influence how you think, actually how you, how you feel and also what your actions are. So each of us on a very individualized basis um, plays a role in, in challenging ourselves, hopefully to become better people um, and also challenge our belief systems that you know, may sometimes be biased. So I just want to include that. And then quickly, um, I'm going to share with you what our three key objectives are in 2020. So our first key objective as a committee is to promote the diversity and inclusion of the community of members and partners within the US and Latin America business community, the society and public life through networking, professional development, mentorship, and community engagement with a particular focus on the LGBTQ plus community. The second key objective we have as a committee is to promote, educate, and ensure that the Latin American business community is a welcoming place for all professionals, including LGBTQ plus individuals. And lastly, we really want to create powerful professional relationships with our allies, our neighbors, and supporters who are invited to learn and interact in a diverse environment in order to ensure their business thrives. So with that, I am really, really excited um, and, and so proud that we have Elizabeth Schwartz here today to actually be our keynote speaker. Um, we are so honored that you're here with us. And um, so we'll just begin. We're going to do this kind of as a Q&A style, Elizabeth. So my you know, first question to you is why? Tell us a little bit about yourself and just you know, the work that you've led around marriage equality and LGBTQ plus rights. Sure, thank you, Kevin, and thank you so much for having me. Um, I, icon, I'm not, but, <laughs> but definitely lawyer uh, and activist in the trenches for 25 years. So um, I'll try to speak to a couple of things that I've had the honor to work on. Um, and then I also wanna speak to the, this week's uh, incredible decision. Uh, so uh, again, my name is Elizabeth Schwartz. I use uh, she, her, hers pronouns. I'm a native of Miami. Um, I'm an attorney with my private practice, mostly in estate planning, adoption, surrogacy. Uh, that's kind of what pays the bills uh, and, and fuels my real passion, which is the pro bono efforts that uh, been able to undertake on behalf of our community and to secure equality. Uh, I, I worked in our human rights ordinance 20 years ago to have uh, the little word sexual orientation added to Miami-Dade County's uh, protections against discrimination in employment and housing and public accommodations. Uh, you'd be surprised how difficult that battle was. Uh, and, and then uh, right after that battle, the Christian coalition outside the, the courthouse, the um, uh, the county commission chambers, excuse me, said, oh, if you give them this right, the next thing they're going to want is the right to adopt and then the right to marry. We're like, yeah, so absolutely. You know what? Yes, thank you. And so um, then uh, we took on the challenge of the adoption ban. Uh, uh, LGBT people could not uh, adopt in Florida until that case was finally won in 2010 and, uh, and then turned our attention to the uh, marriage battle uh, and we worked on the marriage fight uh, which we finally won in the state of Florida in uh, 2015. So it's a little bit of a journey. Excellent. So my next question or that we have is, you know, why, why are committees like these really so important for our local LGBTQ community? I mean, it obviously applies on a national level, but when you think about the Miami LGBTQ community and these, this diversity and inclusion. Why really is this committee and cause so important? Well, I think there, there are a lot of reasons, right? I think sometimes folks have this sense that, okay, well, we're post needing these things, right? Post gay or whatever. Um, I, I don't subscribe to that notion. I think it's very important for our community to, to, to unite and to cohere with one another. I, I think there's strength in that unity and there's strength in those numbers. 
And, uh, and I just want to highlight, I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly none of us expected when we scheduled this uh, program so long ago that we would be coming on the heels of such a historic victory with the U.S. Supreme Court. I, I, I was asked to be a spokesperson for a few different organizations, and, and I will tell you candidly, I didn't even have talking points for what happened. I mean, I just was not even expecting it, certainly not expecting Justice Gorsuch to have written the opinion, although I mean, on some level we, we did expect it because He's a strict textualist. He wants to see what the words mean. And obviously sex means sex. And so they kind of, their hands were tied unless they wanted to be complete hypocrites, which is like some folks. Um, uh, but but they, they did the right thing at the Supreme Court. And so, so certainly we understand that what that opinion means, or maybe you don't, so I'm, excuse me, I'm going to potentially insult your intelligence here. Um, this opinion is only about employment. It's only about protections for LGBT people, and it is gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people uh, on the basis of uh, sexual orientation and gender identity, it's protections against employment discrimination. So, so just to circle back to your question, um, what this means is not that the work is done, but it means we now need to double down because in, in places like Florida, Florida is one of the 27 states where we don't have those protections statewide. Um, we don't have employment protections, and we still don't have protections in, against discrimination in public accommodations like restaurants, hotels, um, and in finance, credit, and in housing. So we still don't have those protections. So it's, it's not like we've crossed the finish line. It's like, okay, this was a great victory. This was a great um, clarity and uh, narrowing of the fight because now we, now we have the, the ammunition. We've got more arrows in our quiver. We now know the Supreme Court says that sexual uh, orientation discrimination and gender identity discrimination is a violation of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. We all knew it. Cases have all proven it. We, but now the Supreme Court has said so. And quite frankly, just my tie here. Um, <laughs> getting all worked up, and I'm like getting out of alignment here. Um, but so, so, you know, lots of these other federal uh, and state laws look to the discriminate, the Civil Rights Act of 1960, but they look to these, to, to a, dis, a definition. So now we have a definition. So now we need to double down and unite uh, to, to continue this fight, specifically in Florida, what that means is passing the Florida Competitive Workforce Act. That is the, the bill that has uh, been proposed and proposed and proposed, and it's got a lot of bipartisan support. And, um, and so that would be the resource for those critical, um, uh, uh, comprehensive protections that we are so anxious to have. And of course, um, it's really important for us, uh, not only because it's the right thing to do, but because, it, I mean, like morally, but it's also the right thing to do, as was pointed out already, from a business perspective. Um, you know, in Miami, Look, we took down our marriage ban in, in, this, in the city of Miami and in the state of Florida before the U.S. Supreme Court told us to do so. So the Obergefell decision in 2015 came down in June. In January of 2015, we were standing on the courthouse steps. I'm pointing to the courthouse. Um, standing on the courthouse steps in downtown Miami with our hands raised in victory because we had the, uh, we had the courage in the state of Florida to take our ban down first. And, and so we need to do the same. We need to lead uh, the South in the state of Florida, and we need to lead the state of Florida in Miami. There are 8 million LGBT workers in the United States. That's the estimate, 8 million. And about half of them, so about 4 million, live in states without explicit statewide employment protection. So 4 million LGBT people just got employment protections. But again, in Florida, we still, that is employment only, still not public accommodations, housing, or finance. And in, in the, the, just to make the kind of boring economic argument for a second, the LGBT community in South Florida has purchasing power estimated at $8 billion. So Miami-Dade LGBTQ-owned businesses and professionals are clearly an essential part of the diverse and dynamic business community in Miami. And, and it is important for us as business owners to, to understand how important LGBT consumers are to our local economy. And there have been lots of studies. Um, I think India did a study 
that uh, that the World Bank the World Bank d uh, did this study that discrimination against LGBT people in India can be costing that country about thirty two billion dollars a year and lost economic output. And if you think about that, it's 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 obvious, right? I mean, every trans youth thrown out of a home, you know, forced to miss out on education, is a loss for society. Every gay and lesbian worker driven to leave their job or even leave the country. Uh, is a lost opportunity to build a more productive economy. So the the the, the idea of, of attracting and retaining quality, uh, uh, competent employees is is certainly not just you know a matter of altruism, but also self interest, right? I mean, it's they both kind of point in the same direction. So um, so I think this is really important, and and I think you know we've seen this over and over. Um, We've seen multinational companies, uh, they know, they can tell us, they have trouble convincing an openly gay executive to transfer to a, a state or a country that is intolerant of LGBTQ people. Um, tour operators say that LGBT tourists uh, 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 stay away from hotels and attractions in unfriendly countries. Um, you know, Mexico City was an amazing pioneer, right? 2006. Mm -hmm. Uh, past marriage equality. I mean, so so you know, we see what what leadership looks like, and 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 we look to the business community. I mean, this case, this incredible victory at the U.S. Supreme Court, was absolutely led by this incredible coalition of businesses who said discrimination is just it doesn't pay. It's not smart. If you look at the um, website for America Competes, uh, they were a great uh, they were a great convener of fair-minded businesses. You see that it's it's really a, um, uh, it's a no-brainer. So, and, and so unfortunately for many of us, there's not a, um, if, if, if for many people, if their heart doesn't tell them to do the right thing, they, they we got to look at the wallet, right? And make the financial Absolutely. argument. And, 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 and that's our, that's our task together um, as a, as an LGBT community, because um, while our allies are, are just fantastic and, and we need every champion, um, sometimes you need that driver from, from, from within the community to say, hey, let's link arms and let's talk about diversity, equity, inclusion for all of us. And certainly um, uh, super grateful that the conversation around um, uh, Black Lives Matter was raised because we, we know uh, uh, in, in instinctively, but important to articulate that that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And so we we stand uh, with 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 those who are marginalized, and we want to bring our fight to support the same way that we ask them to stand with us as we fight. And I actually I think that's a really important point that you just made because I think a lot of times, um, if you are a part of obviously a member of the LGBT community. Um, a lot of times what we what I tend to see and where I think there's so much more work to be done too is you know we need to make sure that we are we, we are with our trans brothers and sisters as well um, and also when you look at it across kind of racial racial ethnic lines there is a, a such a more disp disproportionate need um, in other communities that's a part of our community but that's also work that we have to do as well um, it's absolutely it's, it's you know building those bridges, um, building those understandings, you know, make, bringing, making sure that the right people are having those discussions to make sure that it's not just inclusive for LG or LGB, that it is truly inclusive. And and I think there's you know, would you like to comment on that? Because I know you know there's a lot of work even within the community to really um, make some strides in that area as well. Absolutely. No, thank you for lifting that up. Uh, I think one of the conversations that I've seen sort of finally happen uh, over the last few weeks has been has been racism within the LGBT community, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people think like, oh yeah, we're oppressed. We get it. You know, we understand. No, not necessarily, right? Many of us have these intersectional identities where we're oppressed for multiple reasons. Um, and, and so it's, it's important for us to continue to, to dialogue and to learn and to listen um, so that we, we are educated and that we can be a stronger voice. I will tell you candidly, um, I mean, I'm so thrilled about this DACA decision today. And mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the concerns that I had like in my heart was, because I, again, I didn't expect 
this um, greater decision written by Roberts. Oh my gosh, like, I guess he's actually paying attention to the law. Anyway, um, but I was nervous that, you know, after this amazing Victory Monday, that, you know, the community would just be like waving rainbow flags and then there would be a DACA loss and we'd be like, whatever, sorry, you know? And, and I was nervous because it's happened in the past. It happened, frankly, around the Voting Rights Act uh, gutting that our community was so thrilled about marriage equality that as the Voting Rights Act got gutted, our leadership didn't really stand up and say, that's not okay. I think it's a different movement now. I think mm -hmm. our leadership and our activists are more sensitized, but I had that fear like, oh my gosh, I hope that folks speak out and, and, and talk about how messed up that DACA loss was. And then we got to win another one. And it's like um, really amazing. But, but, but really, thank you, Kevin, for elevating that point because that's another great reason for a group like this, which is a, which is a safe space uh, to, to talk about the ways in which we still need to learn. Um, mm -hmm. I certainly have had to do a lot of education around transphobia um, in our community. Um, you know, I've, I've certainly talked to lots of cisgender folks who've been like, why are they in our movement? Because this is about like the right to love. This is about affectional preference. And, and, you know, what I always say is, look, at the end of the day, we all get beaten up in the alleys for the same reasons, which is that, you know, I'm a little too butch of a dyke or you're too femi a queen. And we're, and that's all that we're doing. And we're, we're, we're defying gender stereotypes. And, and Absolutely. that's the same reason that trans people and disproportionately trans people of color and this dis disproportionately trans women of color um, themselves get attacked because you're threatening these gender norms. So in fact, we our issues are all the same. And, and, and just, just quickly, one more thing about this opinion, which I just am so thrilled about, um, the Monday uh, Bostock opinion. You know, it, this was three different cases, right? This was two gay men who had been discriminated against and a trans woman. And, um, and really the arguments were different. Right, there were there were three different cases, and there were on some level different arguments for gender identity, sexual orientation, and and it's a really sweet and very fitting um, bow that they tied around uh, this issue for our movement by making that one opinion. It could have been three different opinions. They made this one opinion, which I think highlights the fact that we are we are one movement. That's very powerful. So. Any closing words before we um, move on to some Q&A? Um, I'm just super grateful to be here. I, I, I love that you uh, are, are, are lifting up these issues. I'm always happy to be a resource to you whenever I can. I, I nerd out on these issues a lot. So I, I'd love to come back and see what, what comes of your organization and, and your affiliation. Um, I, I just really hope that all the momentum that we're seeing around all these issues translates into voting. Um, and I, I'm certain that you can't be political, but I will just say we need to get out of office anti-LGBT people from the top of the ballot all the way on down. So I, I hope that the energy uh, translates into really showing up at the polls. I think the consensus is that we're supposed to vote by mail right mm -hmm. now because it's, you know, so go, so order your ballot and, and make sure that you do that because even if you're the, the, the folks who are on the ballot weren't your number one choice, um, it's important to understand that like we've seen this week, uh, who's on the Supreme Court matters uh, and, and the people that fight for us at every level, uh, school board, representative, you know, make sure you inform yourself and you, you show out to vote. And just thanks for your attention. Really appreciate you being here. No, we, we really appreciate you being here. So we do actually have a question for you, Elizabeth. Um, one of them is in its simplest form, and this is from Diana, how would you describe diversity and inclusion in the workplace in its simplest form? So, sure. So, um, you know, I, I think the diversity is, is generally, um, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on this, but, but I think that diversity generally is the idea that you're sort of open to different people, that you're, 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 you're tolerant, as it were. I, I think inclusion goes the next, uh, goes the next step. And, uh, and inclusion is, is what uh, it has you be sure that you're lifting up and that you're welcoming into every space uh, all, all people. Right, so it's 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 not just 
yes, we're good, yes, diversity, but inclusion is really making sure that you uh, take those extra steps. So just things that I think about are, for example, look at your forms, like your intake forms for your business. You know, do you have like husband, wife, mother, father, you know, is it very binary that way? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think just, just looking at all of the ways in which you, if you interact with the public, like in the media or social media or your website, you know, do you have, are all the images of couples, you know, just heterosexual couples and, or, or, white people, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So, so I, I think of things like that um, as, as, as the inclusion, you know, taking that extra step. I don't know if that's a good answer. But that's my and, and one thing I would put out there for anyone who's interested in learning more, if, if you do have some questions is HRC has what's called the Equality Index. Um, HRC is an organization based out of DC and it's called the Human Rights Campaign. They have um, not only a tons of research about diversity and inclusion, but specifically related to LGBTQ, as well as they actually rank um, a lot of large, I think it's almost Fortune 500 companies, they actually rank them across a various measurements um, around benefits, inclusion, same-sex benefit. I mean, it's so comprehensive. So I would just uh, put out there for anyone that if you would like to learn more, go to the Human Rights Campaign website and you will find a plethora of, of really interesting and valuable information around these topics. Um, and, and the other thing I would add in Florida is that Equality Florida, which is mm -hmm. equalityflorida.org, is a great resource as well. They have a, um, an Equality Means Business uh, campaign, uh, which is cohering businesses together. Uh, they have a really great campaign called Open Doors, Puertas Abiertas, that uh, businesses can sign up and show, even a small business, I signed up just to show that you're supportive, that, that you don't need the federal government to tell you you don't discriminate, that you don't discriminate. Um, and, uh, and so Equality Florida has a, a mere equality means business. They're, they're the organization that have, that's been putting forth the Florida Competitive Workforce Act, which I'm really hoping will pass soon. Um, and that is, that's another great resource uh, statewide with a lot of information about it. All right, I think uh -oh. we've got actually a couple That's my more. my timer going off. That was oh. my... <laughs> no worries. For me. Um, so one, one other question that Carmen um, Richards is asking is, what are the yeah. next steps that you would expect to come in the next two or three years um, to, like, towards equal opportunity? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, Carmen, I think the next step is going to be a step back, which is um, mm -hmm. the Religious Freedom Restoration Act cases, the uh, case really there's one big one uh, that's going to come down from the Supreme Court in about a year. It's going to be argued in the fall. Um, so that is, that is going to be the next battleground, if you will. And, and, um, and so one of the things that I think is important for us as a community is to encourage our uh, 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 communities of faith who are fair-minded to say so. Um, I mean, I'm a person of faith. I am like wildly offended by the concept that faith is in uh, congruence or, you know, doesn't, is not um, consistent with support of the LGBT community. I, you can, those two can coexist. Um, so I think it's very important for, for everyone to, to come out, whether you're coming out as a gay person at work, whether you're coming out as a person of faith, even in the gay community, that can be challenging because many of us have been rejected from our communities of faith. And so we, just, we, we, we have a disconnect, like how could you be both? So I, I do think it's very important uh, to, to have our allies uh, in our churches and synagogues and mosques also talk about how they feel about about um, acceptance. I don't like tolerance because that's like, you're putting up with me, you're tolerating. Um, yeah, I have a I real issue with that word also. I have a yeah, real issue I with the word that. tolerance. Yeah, I hate that, we're tolerating, it whatever. Just, so, it's almost yeah. like you're, you, you're still about a, some piece of, you know what, if, if I had my choice, um, I would discriminate against you, but I, exactly. I'm being asked to tolerate you. And it just, yes. it, it's not a great word, I don't think, just the, the, right. the overall Absolutely. word itself. For sure. And, the me, um, just checking the time, right? Do we have a hard stop at 545 or can we continue on? Just a question for, I guess, Clementina or Christian. I think we've got a couple more great questions in the chat, Kevin. So definitely take another three or four minutes. Okay, perfect. Okay. So another, another great question we have in this one, um, you know, what are the expectations or the real meaning of inclusion when it comes as a member of the LGBTQ community? Like what does inclusion really mean? Um, and how can straight, how can allies 
um, make LGBTQ, LGBTQ people feel um, included as peers. And so, I don't know, Christian, do you wanna take that one? I'm gonna let Elizabeth go first and then I'll add okay. some opinions oh, after as well. Oh, <laughs> no, I was waiting to hear your answer. I, mean, I, I think I already said some, some of the things, you know, like, you know, your, your marketing materials and your, you know, as, I'm, I'm talking about businesses, obviously, right? I mean, but in terms of just friendships, right? I mean, just, we're humans, right? Just seeing us as, it's just about our common humanity. Um, right. You know, we have the same dramas, the same challenges, <laughs> the same celebrations. Um, you know, I, I, one, one thing that I've had that people have asked me, like, well, what if somebody is, I think they're gay, but then they're kind of closeted and I want them to know, I want them to know I'm supportive, right? So maybe that's where that question's coming from. Like, how do I let people know I'm supportive? And, and I'm like a big believer in lying right? Just like, even if you have to say like, oh, my sister's gay, whatever, she's not, or you don't have a sister, whatever. But like, if, in other words, not to say like, oh, I love the gays, my florist is gay, because that's condescending. But like, really to kind of almost work it into conversation, like, oh, did you see this amazing court case? I'm so excited, you know, whatever, just to <clears throat> show, because because of course, we should give um, respect to the fact that in Hispanic communities, Right, this it's a little bit it's a little bit more challenging to be out. Um, my my wife is Cuban, and and I remember going to sort of like family parties, and like everybody is dancing like same gender, but like nobody was talking about the fact that they're gay. It's, it's like you know what like, what is it? Don't ask, don't tell. So uh -huh. so I understand that it's that I'm speaking from a place of privilege to and being you know running my own business. Right, you were saying um, how has this impacted you personally? Well, mm -hmm. I never went to work for a law firm in no small part because I knew that I wanted to be out and do work for the community. And, and 25 mm -hmm. years ago, that wasn't a given. Now, now it's, now you're recruited for being gay, but you know, then, then, you know, it was harder to even know you should be out in your resume, but, but I'm a big believer in dropping those little hints to show where you stand. And even if it's not true, um, you know, whatever, like you're, Oh, my brother, I don't know. It, you can absolutely um, work that in. Yeah, all I, all I would add there um, would be allyship and showing up as Elizabeth has touched on. And I think that question came from Carmen Richards. And I think you're an incredible example of, a, of an ally, Carmen. And frankly, with what we're building here within the chamber, um, what, you know, the, the uh, committee that you're leading through Women Committed, and kind of Kevin and, and myself, my efforts with, with Together We Advance, clearly there's going to be a lot of collaboration, a lot of allyship between the two groups. And um, I think that's how our straight peers can show up. I think also and lifting up our issues, right? I know Carmen's doing a conversation about financial planning for LGBT people. Like, think about it, talk about it, educate. You know your friends. You know, get educated yourself. You know, reach out in the community, as you say exactly, Christian. Just showing up and showing up. I think another key piece that just a, a little bit more of, of what you were saying, Elizabeth, is, um, you know, don't be silent. It's if you hear, if you're not around a person who may be LGBTQ, but you're around another peer of yours, a coworker, and you hear someone make um, a statement that may be obviously offensive, um, probably offensive to you, because if you are an ally, you would probably take it as being very offensive, but don't be quiet. Um, I, I think it's also, like you said, challenging and, and standing, standing your ground in a sense to do it in a constructive enough way, but to be able to have that discussion and understand why, you know, why would you say something like that? So it, at least yeah. you're helping to maybe raise someone's level of awareness a little bit. Um, but staying silent, I think, and under any circumstances is, you know, we all have a responsibility to not stay silent um, because it's, it's critical. I mean, silence basically is, it's not kind of, you're, on, you're, you're sort of defaulting to just what is and that, you know, that's why we're here is to get, get our voices out there and to be vocal. Um, is your, I just have a question for you about, about Together We Advance. I know that a lot of the, like in schools, the different affiliate groups will be like the Gay Straight Alliance. So is Together We Advance sort of specifically inclusive of allies? Yes. Great. Absolutely. It's, it's Absolutely. meant to be almost a partnership in many ways because, um, just because of the audience and that's what we want. I mean, we want people who obviously are already you know, aligned, you know, have obviously either a, a gay member of their family, it doesn't matter. I mean, just, it doesn't matter if they're supportive. Um, obviously, we're more powerful together than we are um, separate. So definitely. And that's just about that's building great. understanding. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Yeah, I think that many people get that this is sort of the civil rights movement of our time. So even if they don't have a horse in the race, you know, they, they would want to join in. So I think the last question we did answer around the benefits to society and to the business world overall, kind of we, you had yeah, touched on. I sort of launched impact. into that. <laughs> so thank you. And then the last one we had is, are there any initiatives to include like local, like local or small businesses as a part of um, that, to, you know, together we advance? I guess, is that, Ruben, I'm not sure if you meant as this organization or just, I'm assuming that's what your question is. Or maybe even Elizabeth, as a small business owner and founder, have you got a perspective on what small businesses could be doing? Well, definitely signing on to that um, open doors, the Equality Florida, uh, maybe we can send it out to people. I think that's really, really important to show, to, to really to show our support. Um, and 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 I, I think that you know to, to make the the work environment safer and more inclusive for LGBT employees, uh, you know, at, at any size, we can um, make sure that we're uh, being public about that support, right? Um, and that that just indicates who we are. Um, and and I also think you know that it's really important for us to be. Oh, the question is Ruben is asking about this organization, so I'm going to shut up and let you answer. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'll definitely, I'll take that one, Kevin, and then I'd love you to kind of um, compliment it. I mean, Ruben, the whole notion is, and we're going to touch on this in just a second, we're going to have some great programming between now and the end of the year. So frankly, if you're a small business owner and you're focused on running your business and adapting kind of through COVID, we're going to bring a lot of resources, tools, um, materials, coaching to you free of charge through your membership with the US-Mexico Chamber of Commerce and the Inter-American chapter here in Miami. So hold tight, this really is set up, you know, primarily for small business owners and entrepreneurs to give you the resources to make, um, you know, all of these uh, changes that we're discussing today. And, and as we said, show up. So I think with that, do you, um, Tristan, I'm gonna hand it over to you. I know we're a little bit past 545 so that you can actually take us through all of that amazing, the events that we have planned for the, the back half of this year. Really to Thank mid back, back half. Fantastic. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Elizabeth, for all those incredible insights. We were honored to have you join us today. Um, Thank you. And hopefully this is the start of a, you know, a longer term relationship between yourself and your firm and, uh, and our chapter. Um, I'm very proud to be leading this committee alongside Kevin. Um, you know, whilst originally from London, my first job was uh, out of college in Mexico City. So I'm a passionate, um, you know, very passionate about Latin America. And when this opportunity came up to push forward diversity and inclusion efforts, I jumped at the chance to, to lead this with, with Kevin and really make Miami a more inclusive business environment. So we've got some great programming open to all members and of course our allies between now and end of year, starting uh, in August with a professional online brand building uh, forum. We're gonna focus specifically on LinkedIn and talk about building a very strong professional brand on that professional social media um, platform. We'll be collaborating with Carmen Richards and uh, the Women Committed uh, Committee on that one. And then, of course, we will be partnering with Maven Leadership Collective in the month of September. There we are going to talk about the business case for diversity and the bottom line numbers in a bit more detail. Um, and of course, we all, we're also going to talk about um, pronouns and the use of pronouns correctly. And thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing your pronouns today and setting that great example. So that will be a wonderful, again, free um, kind of resource um, uh, for you all, especially those in small businesses that you can take away and implement um, at your firms. And then we're really excited that Kevin um, will be leading us through an energy leadership um, and the seven distinct levels of energy leadership um, in the month of October. Um, you know, we're going to learn how to take control of your energy, both inside and outside of work. Um, and he's going to give us some great tools and techniques to help shift energy levels as well. So that's programming for August, September and October. So with that, and with time in mind, a big thank you to um, the Honorable Jonathan Chayat, our Consul General of Mexico here in Miami for your unwavering support. To our keynote speaker, Elizabeth Schwartz, an amazing lawyer, author, activist, thank you for making the time for us today. Of course, to you, Kevin, um, you know, I couldn't be doing this without you, and we're so excited that you'll be bringing all of that incredible coaching experience from two steps forward um, to all of our members, um, both our LGBTQ members, but also our allies uh, this year. 
Antonio, Antonio Pena, thank you. Under your leadership, you're making this chamber an inclusive environment for all and promoting, more importantly, allyship. And of course, last but not least, to you, Clementina, for your unwavering support um, of all of the chamber initiatives. So with that, I would like to close out today's session. Um, of course, if you'd like to get involved, please do get in touch with us. Um, you can contact Kevin, myself, and Clementina uh, via LinkedIn or via our emails. We'll be doing a follow-up today with Elizabeth's um, business card, her virtual business card, um, after today's session. And we'll include in our contact details. So any suggestions on programming, um, and if any of you would like to get involved to lead sessions, of course, to participate in these, um, get in touch with us. So with that, thank you once again, Elizabeth. Thank you, Kevin. Um, and to all of you that turned up today, we really appreciate the support. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone.